Last spring, we talked with Mark and Ryan about the corn sprint and how much nutrition a high yielding crop really needs. Now we're checking back in to see what actually happened, what came out of the soil and what's going back in. I'm Sherry Cook, and in this series, we'll be talking to farmers, advisors, and experts, and we're going to see how they're advancing crop nutrition. When we met with Mark and Ryan last, they were pushing yields using microessentials, Aspire, Fall and Hydrus, and a very intentional nutrition plan. Now that harvest is wrapped up, we wanted to hear, did the plan work? What changed? And what's the strategy for 2026? We're excited to have you guys with us. Last time we spoke, it was springtime and you guys were spraying and the corn was looking beautiful. And how, how did the summer progress? I couldn't have written a better script for this whole season, I don't think. Planting went fantastic. Spray season was fantastic. So, I mean, we just kind of skirted by to the south of some major showers that went through central Minnesota. And we we're just to the north of some others. So we were kind of right in a sweet spot here, I think, in Minnesota. So it was just a fantastic season. From your fertility side of things, anything that you had to change mid-season, anything that was different or that you just kind of had to run with? You know, based on the weather and the way the crops were, um, we stuck with our top dress plan of urea, AMS, and a nitrogen stabilizer on the fields that we had planned to do that on. Any other fertility, micronutrients, foliar applications that were made this summer? Yeah, so some fields got fungicide, and along with the fungicide, uh, we made a, a boron application at, at tassel time on the corn. Did you do that across all the acres, or was it certain fields based off of tissue samples, or how did you come to that conclusion? You know, a lot of rain was coming in our forecast, so we wanted to get stuff done, and we just kind of got, you know, we had planned for the corn on corn field, we did a fungicide application on. Some of the corn slaving fields, we did some strip top trials and did a few of them, but we were definitely, we've tried fungicide in the past in our area before, hence we've had mixed results. Um, so we once again tried them on this field too. So we had two 20 acre strips on the field. Nice, so what were your results this year? Depends who you ask, Sherry. Ryan doesn't think it was beneficial and I'm not sold on it yet. I haven't had enough time to look through the data, but Ryan will say it only added moisture, not economical. But in all seriousness, we, we had the drone up there um, and we could definitely pick out the trials um, in the summer. And as well as on uh, NDVI imagery, you could see where we had made the applications. So we just need a little more time to evaluate the actual yield response. I know we've on two different varieties uh, within the field. So obviously I think one variety did have a little better response than the other one. So, I'll, you know, just look at, we'll have to dig into the information though. So as we, as we wrap up fall, cause now you're done combining, harvest went well? Mid 80 degree weather for probably eight, nine days in a row. I mean, the beans came along just accordingly, you know, um, so nothing slowed us down except a couple minor breakdowns. And we pretty much kept up with the maturities on the soybeans as they dried down. Um, we had, we did, we're getting some nine, ten percents, but as we got to later maturity beans, all of a sudden on the end, we were getting that 11 and a half, 12. So we were catching up with the maturity of the beans on the end. And as you plan for 26, have you already put any fall fertilizer down? Um, we got some nitrogen down right now, form of anhydrous ammonia down. So basically on the soybean ground that we know we're going to be having next year, that we know we can go out there and do a side dress application, you know, the, the nice fields that are drained well, we'll have the nitrogen based layer down already. I think in our geography here, you know, the importance of getting fall work done, um, you know, a lot of people understand that and, and there's a lot of value on, you know, being able to plant timely in the spring and uh, not having to wait. So, I mean, the more we can get done in the fall, the better results we're going to set ourselves up for. Mark and Ryan showed us once again how much a nutrition plan evolves and how you need to be able to pivot and how every field, every soil type, and season changes the decisions that you make. If you're pushing yield or managing tight economics, planning starts now. Thanks for joining us on Advancing Crop Nutrition. We'll be back with more real-world insights 
from growers and retailers across the country. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget, visit cropnutrition.com.